Let us pray. Eternal God, we have gathered with a spirit of humility, with open hearts, even to the point of breaking, as we seek to receive this story with our whole selves. We travel with Jesus the way of the cross so that our Easter alleluias will take on new meaning. In drawing closer to Christ and his crucified love, may we draw closer to you and your beloved world. Amen. It was Passover tide when two and a half million Jews were visiting Jerusalem from all over the region to observe the holy days. This was a time that families gathered to celebrate what God had done for them, especially in the Exodus event. They remembered the first Passover, when the angel of death literally passed over a family's house that was covered by the blood of the lamb. Bitter herbs symbolized the bitter bondage of slavery, of feeling separated from God and of not fulfilling the purpose for which God created and recreated us. The bread was unleavened to represent haste and holiness, haste in the flight from bondage to freedom, and holiness, the call to live life overcoming sin and temptation. The wine was a symbol of the regenerate power of God. As we think of that city and the size of it and all those people coming together, we begin to understand the need for a place for the disciples to gather with Jesus away from the crowds. Jesus had a price on his head, and for all that was ahead of Jesus, he needed that evening of intimacy with his disciples. So there was need of a safe place, and there was need for secrecy. Just a few days ago on Palm Sunday, Jesus' humble parade had sparked the patriotic hopes and dreams of the people. They hoped he would challenge the Roman Empire on its own terms and bring about a return of the Judean Empire of David. People were expecting great things militarily from Jesus, and the expectation that a Messiah would come had been in their culture for centuries. Many stories were circulating about Jesus, especially the one coming from Bethany. People were saying anyone who could raise the dead would have the power necessary to liberate us we would follow such a leader. Pilate was on edge. He knew that he stood to lose his job if there was trouble. And so during Passover, Pilate lined the way into the city with crosses. The victims on them served as a horrific panorama of what would happen to anyone who dared disrupt the peace of the empire. Pilate made sure his guards would keep careful watch over the temple, ready to respond if there was a disturbance. Jesus knew what was ahead, and yet he did what he did every night. He invited people to eat with him. He invited his friends, and he invited the man whom he knew would betray him. He gathered friends and enemies, and he broke bread with them. He ate with them as he had so many times before. He celebrated the Passover with them, as he did each year. When Jesus broke bread, everyone, the rich and the poor, the righteous and the sinners, experienced God's welcome at his table. And when Jesus broke bread, the hungry were fed. The 23rd Psalm reminds us, you prepare before me in the presence of my enemies a table. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Why would the Lord come to prepare a table before us? The answer has to be because the way forward for humanity, for all humanity, is to be nourished by the community and to be blessed by his spirit. The challenges of life require that we be so sustained and blessed. In the midst of trials, our source of joy is our fellowship with the shepherd. And the 23rd Psalm describes the joy of being in a personal relationship with God, a relationship that has no end. It describes life as a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage with God 
and our final destination is the house of the Lord. Our final destination is unhindered fellowship with Jesus Christ, and that should define everything we do in the meantime. In the worst of times, in the darkest hour of human history, Jesus uses a sacramental experience to keep the faithful to God for all eternity. It would take time for the disciples to fully understand everything Jesus was telling them that night. They wouldn't understand until he was arrested. But in the darkest hour, Jesus created a legacy of hope that the darkness has never been able to extinguish. When lies were being told behind closed doors and people were conspiring to kill him, he offered the human race the promise of eternal life, that all the lies in the world have never been able to discredit. In that tower, ter terrible hour, he took the brokenness of his own life and gifted it to the world. He poured it out to all flesh, and the world got its clearest glimpse of the awesome power of God. Jesus knew that for all the madness and anguish of the following day, in time the darkness and gloom would surrender to the glorious sunrise of an Easter morning. And so in the breaking of the bread, Jesus issues an invitation. For on this night, on the night he was betrayed, on the night before he died for us, Jesus said to those gathered, this is my body. Not just the bread, but the company who gather to share it. This is Jesus' body given for the world. We are all made in the image of God, and when we ever gather with others made in God's image, others for whom Christ gave himself, Jesus invites us to do so in remembrance of him, aware of his honoring presence. It is a solemn charge Jesus gives us, for we are called to encounter and receive Christ in the hospital or in the food bank, in the homeless shelter where we volunteer, in a neighbor with whom we visit, in a care receiver whom we serve as a Stephen minister, or in someone sitting beside us. What an opportunity it is to live every moment as an invitation to feast with Jesus. That is the invitation we receive tonight, to approach this table as if it were the Last Supper, to break bread in the presence of one who celebrated his Last Supper as he did every meal, to be the body of the one whose body was broken for us. Lord, we heard how your disciples asked where you wanted them to prepare the Passover, and we too wonder still, where will you have us prepare for the Passover celebration that you transform into a meal of holy communion with you? For one, we make ready here and to this table. We come from the separate journeys of our lives. No two journeys are alike, some have traveled far to be here, and each has made his or her various way to come to the table. Some need to be nurtured with grace. Some need to be comforted with compassion. Others need to be forgiven with love. Some need to be fed with inspiration, and some need your healing touch. Some have fought on so foreign soil, and others have worked the land as farmers or have been teachers, yet others survived their work in urban canyons and came here and found communion with God because we made ready here at this table. Some enjoyed the mystery and majesty of motherhood and here at this table gave birth to spiritual wonder. And so we know why the Lord wanted us to make preparation here for sacramental mystery. Have you ever asked the Lord where he wanted you to make preparation and sensed his answer was the family meal at mealtime? Or perhaps you shared fellowship at the table with friends and there you prayed because two or three were gathered in his name and he was there and love became tangible with taste and aroma 
because of the love offering by which the table was prepared. And conversations became sacramental because of their vulnerability and authenticity. I have often suspected that the reason the Lord chose a common, ordinary table as a symbol as th of the greatest miracle of all time, intimate communion between divine nature and human nature, was that he fully intended the family table at mealtime to be a sacramental experience. But Lord, some of us often take our meals alone, and some might say being alone is a whole lot different from being together at mealtime. But you are never alone, comes the reply, for I am with you always. When I took the bread and broke it and filled my cup and shared it, I was feeling alone too, even though I was surrounded by those closest and dearest to my heart. But the spirit that knows of kinship to those in this world and in the next, they are never far from the heart of God. We are called to come to the table, to be connected to the spirit of Christ's life, the greatest treasure the world has ever known, in the cup that overflows. <laughs>